All right, ladies and gentlemen, how are you guys doing today on this Tuesday, January 19th, 2021? What a year it's going to be here on Music of Destruction. Thank you for joining me here tonight. Welcome to another metallic episode of Music of Destruction, bringing you the best in metal-related content on the only metal channel you need right here on YouTube. If you guys missed anything in the past week, click the eye in the upper right corner of the screen. Get caught up on all my latest videos. I'd certainly appreciate it. If you'd like me to review or cover anything... Uh, metal related, please leave it in the comment section. No slam or deathcore, simply have no fucking interest in that shit. Welcome to Album Review Tuesdays here on the channel once again. And tonight I am reviewing an absolute brutal death metal classic with Cryptopsy None So Vile. Released in 1996 on Wrong Again Records. And, you know, a lot of people, including myself, were wondering if they could achieve the same level of brilliance, passion, conviction, and outright savage brutality of blasphemy made flesh with their sophomore effort? And the answer is yes, and it's a goddamn shame that these once mighty kings of Canadian brutal death metal became a pathetic deathcore band in 2008. It's a fucking, the band's a fucking dumpster fire now, but anyway. Anyways, the lineup on None So Vile was as follows. We had Lord Worm, lead vocals and lyrics, John Lavassiere on guitars, Eric Langolius on bass, and Flo Monnier on drums and backing vocals. Now, before we get into the review tonight, I'm going to give you guys some back history on Cryptopsy just in case you haven't watched the Blasphemy Made Flesh review, which you most certainly should go and watch. Originating from the Montreal area, this group first appeared in 1992 when it was called Necrosis. Now, in the same year, it was reincarnated under the name of Cryptopsy with a demo called Ungentile Exhumation and then the album Blasphemy Made Flesh in 94. The group ended up acquiring a really solid reputation in the international Canadian death metal scene and their release of None So Vile in 1996 was the first burst of brilliance in their career. Now, as I've said in the Blasphemy Made Flesh review, I think both of these albums are very, very equal. Uh, this one is almost heavier in a lot of ways, but at the same time, I think it's equal to Blasphemy Made Flesh, and I think they're both equally heavy, but I don't know. None So Vile is just something you guys gotta listen to to experience, and uh, it's pretty fucking savage. Now, from that point, the group clearly outclassed other groups by reinventing the style today categorized as extreme music, and they really did. I mean, these two records are just something to fucking marvel at and behold, and this is how you fucking do death metal, kids, not that fucking Archspire, which is it's sadly a Canadian band, and I fucking hate Archspire. Fucking garbage. Anyway. So yeah, today, I mean, their album None So Vile will always be considered a death metal classic, but I highly regard Blasphemy Made Flesh in there as well, because these two records, like I said, are just sick. Now in 1997, the addition of the vocalist Michael DeSalvo replaced Lord Worm and added a very intense frontman to the group, and also Willie Nelson was added as the keyboard player and added some much needed intensity. Now after a remarkable performance at the Milwaukee Metal Fest, the band received a contract offer from Century Media Records, which was one of the weightiest disc companies specializing in metal music. Now, in each period since the beginnings of the underground metal wave, lead groups have pushed past the limits of musical genres, feeling the pressure to compose an album even more extreme than None So Vile. Members launched Whisper Supremacy in 1998, which is a really decent album. From Cryptopsy, but unfortunately, with Lord Worm being out of the picture, it cannot touch their first two records, in my opinion. Not that Whisper Supremacy is anything to scoff at, and I will be getting that album and doing a full review of that as well. Now, in its association with Century Media Records, the group achieved worldwide distribution for Whisper Supremacy, one of the biggest achievements uh, in the band's illustrious career, meaning. They were able to put on shows on several continents, including Asia, Europe, and North America. Now, in Japan, just three weeks after its release, 6,000 copies had already been scooped up in record time uh, in the land of the rising sun. Like, Japanese people are freaks for fucking extreme metal. And total sales around the world have exceeded 50,000 copies. Quite an exploit in this musical niche, of course. Now, Cryptopsy is the first Quebec metal group since Voivod 
to make such a significant impact on an international level. Since their 1998 release of Whisper Supremacy, significant events have multiplied at an accelerated speed after their American and European tours, uh, their participation in the famous Dynamo Festival in Holland and the shows in Japan. The quintet has gone back into the studio to record and then you'll beg their fourth opus in over six years, which is kind of a hit and miss record. If you see my Cryptopsy albums ranked, you'll know that I wasn't that impressed by that album at all which was produced by Pierre Remillard and also did None So Violent Whisper Supremacy and was released worldwide in the fall of 2000. Now in August of 01, the vocalist Michael DeSalvo left the band after a performance at the German festival at Valken Open Air. He was then replaced by Martin Lacroix for the band Spasme, from the band Spasme. And on June 1st of 02, Cryptopsy put an end in Montreal to a world tour of 150 concerts all throughout North America, Europe, and Asia. The album None, None So Live was released in May of 03, which is a live compilation which I want to get. And since then, all the fans of extreme music around the world can experience this memorable concert, of course. Now, around the end of 03, Cryptopsy were proud to announce the return of the original member and legendary vocalist, Lord Worm. So, now that you guys have some history on Cryptopsy, let's get into the review. So this monstrosity of a fucking album opens with some really fucked up demonic howling before it breaks into Crown of Horns, which is nothing short of visceral fucking brutality and limb-shattering, dismembering violence, man. Like, this album is absolutely fucking insane. And the riffs are nothing short of pure goddamned insanity, as is every other fucking instrument here. The bass can be heard very, very well, and that really drives the record forward and gives it a really, like, insane atmosphere of just pure savagery. And it makes the record more dark and aggressive. Now, the drums remind me of a fucking jackhammer drilling into your skull, spewing your brains all over the fucking wall. Now, Lord Worm's vocals here are nothing short of inhuman depravity, madness, and insanity, and the music matches this unbridled passion and pure sonic intensity that very few bands can match. The lead guitar riffs aren't super technical and they add some really great technicality to the track. However, yes folks, this is just as deadly as Blasphemy Made Flesh, maybe even more so in some ways. Now the production is only slightly improved, which means it still has that raw, savage, sick, putrid, vile stench of filth, and it's absolutely killer. This is a sick fucking opener. Next up we have Slit Your Guts and well, could it sound any more like the fucking song title? This is absolute sonic violence and gut-wrenching brutality that knows absolutely no limits on its intensity. And the images and emotions here depict someone literally going into a manic psychotic rage and slicing their guts open and pulling out their own fucking intestines. That's how savage the riffs, drums, bass and vocals are here. Yep, this isn't your over-technical, super-dynamic death metal, but sure as fuck isn't supposed to be. This is meat and potatoes death metal with some technicality and lots of variation splashed in for good measure. I can see all the victims of the modern tech death poser garbage rolling their eyes at this because it's not technical enough or under it's too underproduced for their precious little ears. Well, guess what, kids? This is what death metal should sound like. Now this song is a chaotic whirlwind of nothing but violence and sick, savage, disgusting, fucking aggression. Amazing track here as well. Next up is Graves of Fathers, and could this record get any more fucking inha inhumanely violent and brutal? I mean, really, this is some of the most intense fucking metal I've ever heard, and it's coming straight from the fucking heart, man. I mean, this is almost unfathomable at how passionately angry, aggressive, sonic, convicted, and outright psychotic this record really is. I mean, you cannot fake this authentic brutality and anger of this caliber, ladies and gentlemen. Lord Worm sounds like he is possessed by the devil himself and wants to disembowel every goddamned human on the planet by evisceration. And the music sounds like it does as well. This sonic insanity and aggression is almost too much to take at times as it will leave you completely lifeless at just how angry this record really is. 
Lord Worm's vocals are disturbing and psychotic, but that could be said about the entire band. These fuckers are on a mission to be the most vile goddamn death metal band on the planet. And you know what? They fucking succeeded on this record. Big time. Now, the only bands I can even compare Cryptopsy to are bands like Nile and Broadquin, but of course Cryptopsy are on their whole, on the whole level of their own, man. They're on a level of their own. Now, when it comes to nothing but pure visceral sick savagery and inhuman disproportionate psychosis, well, that's what this is. Sick song here as well. Next up is Dead and Dripping. And well, this sounds like the band is on a murderous psychotic killing spree and this is just insane because it sounds like the music itself is ripping apart every orifice in your body and rendering you limbless. The instrumentation is nothing but absolutely breathtaking because you simply cannot believe how violently savage this really is. The riffs are so fucking fast that trying to fathom it is damn near impossible at times because of how sonically chaotic and aggressive this really is. And it sounds like it could all fall apart at any moment, but the way they tighten everything up after they're on the verge of collapse is nothing short of fucking brilliant. And this is how you fucking do technical death metal. But this is so sonically brutal that it defies all comprehensive reasoning. The emotions here are some of the most psychotic and insane I've ever had the pleasure of listening to and understanding. This is one of the bands that should never have broken up. Sick fucking song here as well. Next up is Benedictine, Benedictine Convulsions. And well, that's what this track almost induces because the aggression and skull splitting violence doesn't slow down one iota here. The band has one fucking goal in mind and that is to create some of the most violent, sonic intense, angry, psychotic music ever put to fucking tape. And they sure as hell have succeeded on this album because I think this is even heavier than Blasphemy Made Flesh, or at least equally as heavy. I honestly don't know many bands who can compete uh, with Cryptopsy's savage, brutal, gut-wrenching insanity, because that's literally what you get here. This is the stages of someone's complete and utter psychotic mass-murdering rage that knows absolutely no limits and no remorse whatsoever. Conscienceless music here. Like, literally no conscience. So guys, let's listen to Benedictine Convulsions right here on Music of Destruction. We 
And we are back. And my god, does this song slay just like the rest of the record. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Next up, we have Phobophile, which actually opens with some somber piano work before it explodes into utter psychotic, cacophonic destruction and violent gut splattering dismemberment. The depravity here is barely human, and the rage and psychosis that this album fucking puts forth is absolutely sick and disgusting. But I mean, really, would you want it any other way? This is brutal death metal after all. This is one of the most violent and destructive songs on the record, but that isn't even doing it justice, because the entire record is just a splattered, blood-soaked barrage of nothing but sonic skull-bashing brutality of the most aggressive and insane kind. Now, lead guitars add to this chaotic black storm of sick, vile, and savage primal aggression that clearly knows absolutely no fucking limits. Killer song here as well. Next up we have Lich Mistress, and the insanity just doesn't slow down here. And at this point, you probably haven't even fathomed how psychotic the record is yet because it's still soaking in. In fact, it feels like one long mass murder of the most unspeakable and depraved events in history. And the unbridled aggression and brutality is nothing to help the experience of trying to comprehend just how savage this album really is. In fact, I can honestly say that Cryptopsy are one of the heaviest bands in the world, and certainly one of the most violent and aggressive. The riffs remind me of chainsaws grinding your flesh and splitting your limbs into chunks of meat and bones after being sprayed all over the place and you're literally rendered lifeless in a heap of blood, guts, organs, and bones. Absolutely fucking sick. Closing out this absolute massacre of brutality is orgiastic disembowelment or orgiastic disembowelment and that's exactly what this sounds like the conclusion to 32 minutes of the most violent skull bashing depraved sick disgusting crimes in human history towards man and with its most insane and psychotic emotions and events in history this is comparable to De Ted Bundy's maniacal rage and insanity of a man with an unquenchable thirst for human suffering and depravity and that's exactly what cryptopsy went for with none so vile and they fucking succeeded because it's really difficult to imagine how they could have pushed the limits of brutal death metal any further than this i mean how the fuck do you get any more brutal than cryptopsy i honestly don't think that you can their first two records absolutely untouchable that knows no limits or confines and now we come to the final verdict for Cryptopsy's None So Vile, and this is going to get a 10 out of 10 by this masterpiece now, as well as Blasphemy Made Flesh, because you will not fucking regret it. As always, I sincerely hope you enjoyed tonight's video, and hey, if you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell so you don't miss anything, select all, and get all notifications. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Music of Destruction. Follow me over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Music of Destruction. You can join us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Music of Destruction for anything metal related you want to talk about there. The Seed, episode 29, the history of Iron Maiden part 2 up on Patreon right now. If you'd like to support the channel, patreon.com forward slash Music of Destruction. Select the $5 tier, get access to the podcast for a buck a month. I'll give you shoutouts on my channel and review anything you want within reason, of course. Your support going to new equipment, lighting, cameras, and all that stuff. Speaking of which, Colton James and I are doing our first movie review as soon as we get everything I just talked about. Uh, we're doing a professional production. We're going to be doing movie and game reviews, behind-the-scenes stuff, all kinds of cool stuff on Reviews on the Run. So let's check out a clip he just made recently. And we are back. Thank you guys very much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and comment. Have an awesome night. We will see you for Album Ranking Wednesdays. Wednesdays. Cheers, and we'll see you in the next video.